The War of the Worlds Siberia is an upcoming action-adventure game set in an alternative late 19th century Russia. Inspired, of course, by the classic science fiction novel by H.G. Wells, this game is being developed by 1C Game Studios. In a press release, they explained the game's concept, saying, In an alternate 1896, Earth was the target of a massive Martian invasion. The War of the World Siberia takes place in Russia, in case you can't tell by the title, where several characters attempt to save themselves by fleeing panic-stricken Petrograd, which is commonly known nowadays as St. Petersburg, and head for the eastern end of the Russian Empire. Albert Ziltsov, 1C Game Studios director, said, We've always dreamed about making a what-if kind of game. What if the invasion wasn't limited to Victorian Britain, and instead took place all over the world? And I really love this idea because there's so much you could do with showing the perspectives of other nations during the War of the Worlds. It's always shown either from Britain's perspective or with the United States as a direct replacement for Britain. And the rest of the world isn't really spoken about that much. As he continues, We wanted to include Russia in that story. During that period, the country was a powerful empire, plagued by internal struggles. An alien invasion is a historical trigger, much like the revolution of 1917. All the issues accumulated over the years spill out all at once. They also released a trailer for this project a few days ago, which was the first time I'd ever heard of it. Was going to do a first reactions video, but then I remembered I suck at reacting to things. The trailer goes by really quickly, however, with various brief flashbacks and that sort of thing. So I thought it'd be a good idea to go through each shot, especially the short shots, to try to analyse it more closely somewhat. So it starts off with this guy who seems to be injured, just walking in the middle of the snow of Siberia. And also I just noticed you can see a little cabin here, so maybe that's where he's come from. But for some reason he's had to leave, seemingly. But either way, he's suddenly surrounded by wolves, getting ready to attack him. This trailer's interesting because at first I was like, ah, so this is live action actors for the trailer. Then this shot came up and I was like, oh wait, that looks like CGI to me. Has this just been really realistic CGI? But no, I'm pretty sure the people in the trailer are primarily live action. This shot is just at least making use of CGI, presumably because it's a fancy shot that zooms into his eye. Which leads onto the first flashback, which shows a train moving, which makes sense as something to have in in this game, considering the Trans-Siberian Railway is one of the most famous aspects of Siberia, and I believe it was well under construction during this time, so I could well imagine it playing a big role perhaps. And then it zooms through the window of the train, into who I assume is the same guy, but in the early stages of the invasion, so he's looking much cleaner. Don't know if he's a driver or a conductor of the train or something, or maybe he's just a passenger, like a soldier and reflected on the window is a tripod. I really like this shot. The silhouette of this tripod looks really nice and you can see the dangling tentacles and it kind of has this sort of hunched look, I guess. And I just think, judging from this, it's gonna be quite a creepy but thick and powerful design. Back in the present, or well, this 1896 present day, I mean, the guy collapses and has another flashback showing some kind of Russian officer hanging from the train holding a revolver. He definitely stands out in that white uniform, which I'm not sure what this uniform denotes exactly, but it certainly looks like it's high rank. Might even have something to do with the Russian royalty, judging by this selfie of Tsar Nicholas II wearing a similar outfit. I had a look, and I doubt it's this, but the closest I could find, I think, might be this uniform here, which it says is the summer uniform of officials of the military judicial department. It's of the right time period, but in retrospect it is quite a bit different actually. I guess they probably had tons of similar uniforms back then, maybe it's just a standard officer uniform, I'm not sure. Either way, he's wearing a medal which looks to be the Order of St. George, the highest military decoration of the Russian Empire for commissioned officers and generals. Then the trailer shows a guy who I assume is a Cossack. Either that or he's a big fan of the Jackson 5. And he's doing that sort of religious cross on the chest thing that people do when facing death or danger or whatever. 
He certainly looks very worried, and seemingly understandably so, as we then see soldiers disembarking from the train and aiming their guns at something that's very high. What could it be? Then it cuts back to the present day, and the wolves are about to pounce on the collapsed guy, yet suddenly they're startled and run off, and the guy's like, what the heck? Or rather, kagoga cherita. The flashback continues with the soldiers firing at the thing they were looking at, then there's a nice shot of the guy turning around, and kind of blending in with birds flying away, which I really like. It's really reminiscent of so many scenes from the War of the Worlds that have been done previously, when the tripods are near. The guy's then sitting against a tree and getting a match out, I'm guessing because he's cold. And it shows a flashback of some dynamite in dirt. Then it shows in the present the guy lighting the match. Then a flashback showing a train travelling, from what I can tell, carrying an artillery gun. I think there might be a group of soldiers behind it, but it's a bit hard to tell from this image. Then in the present, the guy's match goes out and it's like, ah, oh, jeez. This guy has such bad luck. And here we get a pretty clear shot of his hat, or in particular, the symbol on his hat, which I thought was really interesting because it looks like a very communist symbol, like something you'd see in Soviet Russia with the hammer and all that. But of course, this is set roughly a couple of decades prior to the Bolsheviks taking power, which makes me wonder if, perhaps due to the alien invasion, that's been sped up. As they literally said, an alien invasion is a historical trigger, much like the revolution of 1917. So they've literally compared it to the event that caused the communists to rise. So maybe in this world, that's been brought forward by a couple of decades, and you're not just dealing with the Martian invasion, but also a premature Russian civil war, which could be really interesting if that's the case. Now going into details of the symbol on the cap though, I believe this specifically denotes, as I theorised earlier, that this guy is actually a train worker. It's kind of hard to tell because it's obscured with snow a little bit, but the only symbol I found that really matched this one, and also the cap matches pretty well too, was used by the workers of the Soviet railways. So yeah, I think this guy was a worker on the train, and ended up alone after the train he was working on carrying all those soldiers was attacked and presumably destroyed by the fighting machine. And then he has like a vision of what can be presumed to be his wife or girlfriend, who's seemingly a ballerina. And then the guy gets up, as he notices a stampede of moose, meese, mooses, running by. And he looks around and sees what they're running from. As we see, yet again, the tripod reflected in his eye. I also really like the way they actually shot it, so he shuts his eye. And that continues on to the next shot as he opens it. The final part of the trailer is this wide shot that portrays Siberia with the Martian fighting machine's silhouette on the snow moving. And I really like the way they animated the movement here, it just looks really creepy, heavy and thumping, yet smooth and alien, you know? It just looks really good. Imagine being in this location and there's like massive tripods going about the forests and the snow and whatever. It's going to be pretty spectacular, I think. Looking at the shadow, it kind of looks a bit like the tripod has four legs, but I'm pretty sure that's just the dangling tentacles. I believe this design will have relatively thick tentacles, at least that's just going by the website for the game, which is done really nicely. You've got these sort of what I assume to be concept art, but they're animated to use as the background including showing a tripod, or at least its head, and its pipe-like tentacles waving about, hidden behind trees. Extracting these individual images and putting them together and brightening them up a bit reveals more of what this design will possibly look like. It's quite unusual, I think, and the black colour is also gonna be quite different as well. It kind of looks like wet leather but I think it somehow adds to the organic feeling of it, which is enhanced by the slimy looking tentacles, and also the tripod seems to have a ball sack, I mean egg sack, or some kind of component that resembles such a thing, dangling down from its head. Which is interesting, it'll be fascinating to find out if this part of it will serve any purpose in the game, or whether it's just there to make it look a little more disgusting and creepy. 
Of course, I think the most notable feature of it that can be seen here is the two presumably pulsating pink glowy bits. Kind of reminds me of a brain. Not counting these parts, it looks to me like this rendition won't have any kind of substitute for eyes, as most depictions seem to for some reason. And if that's the case, I think again, it will really add to the utterly alien nature of this machine. Actually, I just realised, this whole design, the colour, the head, the egg sac, it all very much reminds me of the Xenomorph from Alien. Which is really interesting, because you can actually hear the tripod make a noise at the end of the trailer, and when I first noticed the noise, it reminded me of like either the alien or the predator. So I wouldn't be surprised if that is an inspiration for it. The fighting machine is also represented on the logo of the War of the World Siberia. It's just this very basic symbol with a simplified tripod. I think it's very effective, very ominous, and I think it's meant to be in line with like the sort of Russian font too, and matching that kind of Cyrillic style. On the website there's more art showing presumably a soldier around a campfire with his horse, which looks pretty good, and it finishes off with some text that includes further information regarding the project, saying, The events of the game take place in the Russian Empire during the first year of the invasion. Players will encounter remarkable characters, visit picturesque locations, dive into dramatic cinematic scenes, and face arduous challenges. War of the World Siberia is a very ambitious project that was quite difficult to venture upon. It's a challenge for an independent game studio, so we are expanding our team and inviting specialists to our office in Moscow. This project's release date, as well as supported platforms, will be announced later. The game's producer, Andrei Shumakov, added, When we were developing the concept of Siberia, our main inspirations were emotionally resonant narrative heavy games that are not so common nowadays. Our primary goal is to tell an interesting and believable story, introduce the player to a cast of colourful characters, and immerse them in a large-scale spectacular adventure. Turns out, this game has been something the team have been wanting to do for a very long time, with scriptwriter author Sergei Serby Berkatovsky, who was also previously the lead developer on the World of Tanks team for half a decade, revealing the idea of the War of the World Siberia was formed almost 20 years ago, during a once popular video game developer conference in 2005. Martian tripods against the snowy Siberian landscape, Cossacks versus aliens, how cool is that? For years this idea was slowly brewing, so to speak. We were learning to make our own games, watching what others were doing, and today, the moment has finally come when we say we're doing this. And also, just as I'm recording this now, I just realised that that last sentence was kind of like the opening of the War of the Worlds. One C Game Studios was watching the other game studios with envious eyes, and slowly and surely they drew their plans. Like, you know, it's quite funny how similar that was. Anyway, this company certainly seems to know what they're doing. The studio's first project, IL-2 Sturmovic Battle of Stalingrad, seems to have been very successful, with very good reviews, and almost 10 years after it's come out, more than 30 games have been been released in the IL-2 Sturmovic Great Battles franchise. Meanwhile, in 2015, they began developing Calibre, a tactical online shooter that entered open beta testing in 2019, and by early 2023, the game's player base had reached over 2.3 million people, with the full game being released on Steam in April this year. Consequently, it seems like the War of the World Siberia is in quite safe hands, with the press release also explaining that it will feature a thrilling action-adventure experience in the unique setting of the Russian Empire under the rule of alien invaders. An intricate story with memorable characters who represent classic archetypes of 19th century Russia. Shootouts with dozens of weapons, from caplock rifles and black powder pistols to the Maxim machine gun. And the gameplay will include stealth elements and spatial puzzles. For some reason, that bit about stealth elements and spatial puzzles made me think of the Amnesia games, but I don't know if that's an accurate comparison to make. 
So yeah, this looks like it'll be a pretty interesting game. It's quite lovely to see the story of War of the Worlds reimagined and told from a different perspective that I'm sure will include some really great imagery in this fantastic location and setting, as well as hopefully having some good gameplay too. It'll be fascinating to see what happens with the War of the Worlds, Siberia.